My experiments using electrode deactivation to help out with my high pitch issues are starting to bear fruit. My six month fitting last week was pretty successful and I learned some cool new stuff I want to share with you. Hi, I'm Vince, and before we get into that new stuff, here's a super quick recap of where I've been. Since activation, I, like several of you I suspect, have been hearing Minnie Mouse voices via my implant. My speech scores are great, but my own scores for how that speech sounds? Well, there's room for improvement. So three months ago, I asked my audiologist to turn off electrodes 15 and 16. That shifted the frequencies down toward the apex of my cochula, which did lower the pitch, but it also messed up the really high frequencies that used to be stimulated up there at the base of my cochula. So I went back to using all 16 electrodes. Minnie Mouse came back, but hey, so did birds, hi-hats, and my ability to understand speech really well. Not a bad trade-off, all things considered. Since my last video, I've learned some new stuff about turning off electrodes and spanning. I had hoped that if I turned off an electrode, it would span it and create a virtual electrode. Well, of course it turns out it isn't as simple as that. When you turn off an electrode, you can use the software to choose to span it or not. If you choose to span it, a virtual electrode is created, like I'd hoped, but doing so keeps the frequency allocation the same so frequency perceptions don't shift. There are valid medical and technical reasons that you might want to turn off a given electrode and span it, but Affecting frequency reallocation to make things sound lower in pitch ain't one of them. So it turns out that the only way to shift frequencies down is to turn off electrode and not span it. But that leaves a gap where nothing's being stimulated, and that sucks. Unless there's a way around it. I'll come back to that in a minute. But first, if you're going to bend the rules like I intend to, it's important to understand them first, right? So I talked to an expert at Advanced Bionics, and here's what I've learned. Rule number one, you can't span electrodes one or 16. This makes perfect sense because you need an active electrode on both sides of a spanned electrode in order to create a virtual electrode. Rule two is that you can span two adjacent electrodes, but no more than that. For example, I can span electrodes 13 and 14 and make it so that electrodes 12 and 15 use current stirring to create a virtual electrode between them. Frequency allocation, channel width, and even perceived quality are pretty much unchanged. But try to turn off three adjacent electrodes? No span for you. Rule number three says that you can only span a total of six electrodes at once, but no more than that. Now, I don't know why you'd ever want to span six electrodes, but I guess it's nice to know that you can. So there you go. Armed with the official rulebook, my new mini Bluetooth speaker, and a selection of sample testing material, I went in for my six-month mapping. After an hour in the booth, I found that my scores are still quite good. A slight improvement in sentence recognition and background noise, with everything else still about the same. Next came the fun part. First, I verified for myself the effects of spanning by turning off electrode 14 and spanning it. As expected, after learning the rules, a virtual electrode was created between electrodes 13 and 15. Frequencies weren't reallocated at all, so pitch perception didn't change. I didn't listen to it very long, but it didn't seem to sound different than just having all 16 electrodes firing. So after experimenting with various combinations of disabled electrodes without spanning and listening to snippets of Hey Jude through my Bluetooth speaker, instead of just relying on my audiologist asking, How's that sound? I settled on turning off electrode 13. I've been living with that for about a week and a half now, and I think I'm finally actually getting somewhere. The pitch is fundamentally more natural sounding, and I still have high frequencies being stimulated out at the base of my cochlea as nature intended. As you can see, with all electrodes active, one case sits right here on electrode 7. Deactivate 13, and it shifts down toward electrode 6, lowering my perception of its pitch. My ability to understand speech is still good, although my own voice does sound weirder than usual. Music sounds better, although stuff with a lot of overtones, like string pads, guitar solos, and harmony vocals, are messy but drum and bass sound awesome. It's like my ear kind of digs the fundamental frequencies, but still isn't sure what to do with the higher harmonic content. 
Still, it's progress. I'll take it for now. I wonder if the problem might be that I have a big old gap at the position of disabled electro 13, where nothing is being stimulated. Remember, I could turn on spanning to create a virtual electrode at 13, but the frequency allocation wouldn't shift, so what would be the point of that? Well, there is one experiment that I neglected to run last week. It's a creative way to take advantage of a loophole in those programming rules that I talked about earlier. It's pretty brilliant, actually, but I can't take credit for it. It came from a mentor and researcher that I've been working with who prefers to keep a low profile for now. Remember that rule that says you can span two electrodes as long as they're adjacent to each other and are not electrodes 1 or 16? Well, it turns out that you can span two electrodes even when one of them is deactivated but isn't set to span. Here's why that might end up being really important. Like I explained a minute ago, I currently have electrode 13 deactivated. Check it out. You can see that turning off electrode 13 puts 500 hertz right here, right smack at the upper edge of electrode 3 and the lower edge of electrode 4. It sounds to me about right. 1000 hertz is right at the upper edge of electrode 6 and the bottom edge of electrode 7. But now let's look at what's currently happening to 4000 hertz. With 13 turned off, 4000 sits right at the top edge of electrode 12 and also at the bottom edge of electrode 14. Remember, nothing's being stimulated in the area of electrode 13. So some of the frequencies in the neighborhood of 4000 Hz are being redistributed lower to electrode 12, and some are being squeezed higher to electrode 14. What's so important about 4000 Hz? Well, as you can see here, it's pretty close to the highest note on an 88 key keyboard. That's musically important stuff, where a lot of musical second harmonics live, and it's being split up in that region with some going higher and some going lower, and none of it to the area where electrode 13 sits. No wonder male voices sound better, but female voices and a lot of music still sounds really bad with electrode 13 turned off. However, if I can span two electrodes when only one of them is set to span and the other's turned off, I can probably do this. Instead of just turning off 13, I could instead turn off electrode 14 and span electrode 15. 500 Hz and 1000 Hz would still be shifted down to the exact location as they are now, where I'm liking it. But instead of that 4000 Hz area, that hotbed of crucial musical harmonics being split across that big old gap at electrode 13, it now transitions smoothly and naturally across the location of electrode 13 before virtual electrodes take over with a nice transition of stimulation all the way out to the base of my cochlea. All of the frequencies? None of the gaps. Or maybe another combination of deactivated and spaced electrode pairs will sound better and more natural. I don't know. Yet. The good news is my audiologist has agreed to let me come back in another week or so to find out, so I should have the answer shortly. If you're curious about this stuff and want to play around with different scenarios on your own, I use Claude.ai to refine the software visualization tool that I showed you on my last video. It now takes these spanning rules into consideration and gives you an idea of what frequencies are moving where in your cochlea when you turn off or deactivate various combinations of electrodes. I'll put a link to it in the description so that you can play around with it yourself. It's pretty cool. At the moment, it isn't working on the latest version of Firefox, but it seems to work great with Chrome and Safari. The actual frequency distribution is an estimate and hasn't been officially validated by Advanced Bionics as accurate or anything, but it still gives you a pretty good general idea of what's happening. I'll be back shortly with what I'm hoping is going to be my final map for a while. In the meantime, I wish you all well and thank you for watching.